The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 87. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Today we have Laura Bush, author of Lean Branding. Creating Dynamic Brands to Generate Conversion. Welcome, Laura, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? Sure. Um, I'm originally a business major um, with a master's in design management, and I'm doing doctoral studies in psychology. Um, I've been working with startups uh, from every field imaginable for the last five years. And for the last two years, I've been working specifically with tech startups um, in a methodology called Lean Branding, which is what I'm here to talk to you about today. Um, We've been working to make it easier for startups to develop their brands and to thrive doing so. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Now, let's jump right into your book, Lean Branding, which was just made available for purchase in October 2014. And then we're going to go move quickly, but here are the top questions that our reader slash listener would like to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Lean Branding? Definitely entrepreneurs. Um, entrepreneurs in all stages and all walks of life are the reason that I do what I do. Um, for the last five years, as I told you before, I've been mentoring startup founders in order to help them build a brand that can really communicate what their product and service can do for customers. So they are my inspiration. And if anyone's listening and you consider yourself an entrepreneurial mind, then you are my inspiration too. Um, It's just, I've been trying to make it easier for entrepreneurial minds to grow their brands, to grow their products in this marketplace. And it is just so hard to create something different nowadays with, you know, with all the saturation in the marketplace, it can become difficult to find an audience. It's very hard to grow your user base and to succeed as a startup in this environment. And as I'm speaking, even literally hundreds of new brands and products are being born And the internet just makes it that much easier to spread the news. So it's by no means easy to thrive in in an environment like this. And some things were just easier when there was the less competitive space out there. Today, um, we all know that the only way to win in this marketplace is to win at execution. And to do so, I think entrepreneurs need to find the right strategies to connect with their consumers in more meaningful ways, to figure out what it is that they want, what their aspirations are, and to satisfy them. This is one of the key ideas behind Lean Branding. The product or service even that you're building needs to stand out, to differentiate. That's the main inspiration behind the book. And that's when I realized that learning how to build and measure a strong brand story can make or break a startup. Yeah, as I was also telling you before, um, for the last two years, I kind of focused on tech startups. So I worked with 97 very early stage tech startups. Um, They just came to me with a simple idea and we we had eight weeks to turn this really raw idea into a saleable brand. So it was very challenging. And these startups, they were competing with large, well-funded companies that had huge marketing budgets and teams. And here we were, you know, unfunded. We had no time and our teams were two or three tops. So how on earth would we be able to make it? That, That was one of our big questions. And that's when Lean Branding was born out of this need to hack branding. So I saw these teams working, you know, long hours, they were creating products and they were always wondering, you know, is there a way to make branding work for them? What if they learned, you know, about a simple framework to hack storytelling, to use the power of visual symbols, to target their consumers' aspirations, 
You see, most of these uh, developers and designers, product designers, are used to working with frameworks and languages and rules. So compared with what they're used to, branding concepts can sound, you know, abstract, difficult. It sounds like something that you need to pay someone else to do for you, something that you need to pay someone else actually a lot <laughs> to do for you. And I guess this was my main source of inspiration. You know, the struggle of so many entrepreneurs that are trying to make their products stand out. I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I wanted to write the branding handbook that I would have wanted to read when I started. So, Laura, you're helping people differentiate their brands. That's what you were talking about a little bit earlier. And so now I, I'd like to ask you the same thing. What differentiates your book from others regarding the same topic of branding? That's a great question. Um, it's, it's actually pertinent and considering that that's the main point behind the book. There are several things that we try to incorporate in this book that make it different from what's already out there. To start with, Lean Branding is a very tactical book. It, it brings more than 100 tactics to hack the creation of a value story, visual symbols, and effective communication strategies. So unlike other branding books that are out there, we are not here to introduce complicated theories, but to show you how these theories can actually be applied. So in that sense, I would say it's more of a handbook. And there are also over 20 templates that can facilitate the process of brand building. There are dozens of case studies that you can learn from, you know, companies that are young, that are out there, um, that you will probably get a lot of inspiration from. And Another thing that we tried to embed in this book is the idea of no, jar no jargon, like no complicated terms. And whenever we use complicated terms, we do have a list of definitions at the end. We don't want to make branding any more obscure than people already think it is. So it's a way of clarifying it. Um, the book is also different because I am combining insights from business. As I told you before, it's, it's my background. But then we're also combining design and we're also bringing some insights from psychology. Um, and since I operate in that order with Lean Branding, I wanted to create a guide that combined, you know, these secrets of consumer psychology that maybe um, entrepreneurs don't have time to dig deep into um, bring them out, summarize them, clarify them, make them simple for everyone to apply immediately. We wanted to combine that with design strategies and um, have those two align with business objectives that can create truly disruptive brands. That, that's another um, huge difference with what's already out there. And then something that called my attention when I was writing the, the Lean Branding book is that when the Lean Startup movement started, People quickly, you know, were jumping to apply lean principles to everything, to production, to development, to analytics, so many other areas. But I felt that branding was somehow missing. There was this idea that branding was a soft science or, you know, ornamental or a second class concern. I've heard I've heard everything. But lean branding is here to prove that it isn't. And, and we talk about companies like Airbnb and Apple and MailChimp, and there are many others mentioned in the book and how they have taught us that dynamic brands can disrupt the marketplace much faster than competitors and, and their impact can actually last much longer. So Lean Branding, unlike other books, shows you how branding is actually an evidence-based process, not something magical or obscure. Uh, you can deduct a combination of symbol, story, and strategy that will represent your offer based on data. And that's, that's one of the uh, big twists that the book brings to the practice of branding. So when you said that you, you broke it down like a handbook, is this, how would you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this one that they can jump in and jump out as they need information or should they really start and finish it? Well, there's, there's even a chapter for this right at the beginning of the book uh, that will literally give you about three or four ways to read it. There's, you, can, you can skim through it. You can go from one to 304, um, though that's not the only way that you can do it. 
Um, but I guess the main structure of the book, the way it is meant to be read originally is, as you know, and, and lean startup practitioners have probably already seen, um, lean, the lean startup movement is based on this idea that startups must go from building to measuring to learning and that this is you know, an ongoing cycle. So the Lean Branding book is divided into these three sections. It's called Build, Measure, and Learn, just identically um, as a Lean Startup book. And then for each of the sections, you will find strategic branding tips and tools, and you'll get step-by-step instructions to create your own brand components. So the build part um, will teach you how to build um, 25 minimum viable brand components that you will need to enter the marketplace. And then the measure section will give you the tools that you need to measure how well these components are faring in the marketplace. And then the learn section will give you examples and advice on how to iterate um, based on the data that you find and the metrics that you take into account um, as you're measuring in section two. So it all starts um, when Lean Branding defines what a brand is. Um, In the book, a brand is defined as the story that consumers recall when they think of you. And this brand that we define is made up of three parts. Most people think that brands are just logos uh, or, or that brands are just colors or typography. And these are actually just visual symbols. So uh, the book makes it clear that a true brand is made up of three components, a value creation story. And this is where you tell your customers what it is that you're doing for them, a set of visual symbols. And that's where the logo appears that represent your story in the marketplace. And then a strong growth strategy that can communicate the story. So it's, it's a, much integ- a much more integral view of what a brand is. And as you go through the build, measure, and learn sections, you will find ways to create and iterate on your story, symbols, and strategy. So say uh, you were going to start to read the book um, because you already, say you already have a logo, you already have typography, you already have brand imagery defined, and you actually wanted to start in the measure section, that's okay. Uh, Many readers have have actually done that. They just read the measure and learn sections. And if they have to go back to any other build concept, they'll go back to the first stage. Um, Some readers are starting from scratch, so they'll do build, measure, learn. Um, Some readers are just trying to focus on a single component. So they're, they're interested in, for example, building, measuring, and learning only social media marketing strategies. So they'll skip the rest of the content and focus on a single component across the the build, measure, learn cycle. So that's another way to read it. Um, It it was actually fun to design the structure of the book because we wanted to make this handbook handbook material. A lot of readers have um, emailed me being like, this is my new textbook. And that's sort of the feel that that we wanted to to create the idea that this was, you know, the missing handbook to branding for startups. Um, some of the things, like the specific uh, things that you will learn in the book, include naming your brand, which I know is hard for many um, entrepreneurs that are starting. You learn to create a brand story that is very engaging. You will learn how to design your visual identity, as I told you before. So the visual identity that will represent your value story, your logo, your color scheme, your typography. You will also um, build a brand personality and a voice that can let you conquer your audience. And you will develop something we call buyer personas that will help you clarify what your audience looks like. The book will also introduce lean research methods like ethnography that some of the listeners may have um, heard about before. And that method will help you learn about your consumers' needs and aspirations. You will learn how to design landing pages, videos, press releases, ad campaigns, one sheets, slide decks, and you know many other essential brand assets that startups need to grow. 
Um, at its core, I think lean branding is a complete handbook to brand building. And honestly, we try to keep all of the secrets um, away and the jargon away. Uh, we want to we wanted to make this simple. It'll show you everything from you know how to harness the power of content marketing to how to plan and measure a brand partnership. You will also define a brand journey that will help you optimize growth before, during, and after conversion. And you will learn how to set up and measure the impact of your social media marketing strategies. And that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs um, struggle with. So I have this these social media presence. How do I, uh, you know, see what it's, its returns. How do I measure its return on investment for my company? Um, with a low budget, this becomes much more important. So it's it's one of the main areas of the book. And of course, you will learn how to reduce waste as you do all of this because the book will also show you how to formulate hypotheses and validate them. Um, and that'll make your branding less wasteful. Um, lastly, I think one of the things that we were, we really wanted to achieve with the book was to establish this relationship with readers. So we didn't just want to publish a book and leave that content out there. And whenever new content uh, emerged, new tools emerged, then we didn't want to leave readers alone in, in the process of learning how to use these new tools. So we built a very good companion site. And if you go to leanbranding.com, you'll find a blog with many references to upcoming tools and new tips and new strategies. And that's one of the big, big um, add-ons for the book. Excellent. So Laura, you gave us a great breakdown of what your book is all about. And now we're asking you to take it kind of the, that next step. And, and, and we're going to ask you if the reader could only take away one action item or concept out of your entire book on branding, what would you want that to be? Okay, so here's the central idea behind the book. Mastering branding has never been more crucial for you. Developing a unique story to identify your offer in your, in your customers' minds can make or break you in our marketplace. That's the key takeaway. And also that far from you know, the soft science that many people believe branding to be, it is actually data-driven can be led by continuous measurement of actionable metrics. That's uh, another key takeaway from the book. So if you love customers and you hate waste, the Lean Branding book is here to help. Excellent. And and, and there's a couple of quotes that we could have pulled out of, out of uh, this interview so far, but I wanted to ask you anyway, and that's, do you have a favorite quote from your book, one that you wrote uh, or one that's resonated with, uh, with uh, pe- folks, the readers that have listened or uh, read so far? Sure. Um, because a lot of readers are building products and services that are intangibles or tech-based and, and they often feel like these products don't have a body or a voice, this is one of the quotes that has resonated the most. It's, it says, people relate to people and if your brand feels like people, they'll relate to you too. So uh, it, it just reminds you of how brands should be humane. And this quote is out of our section on brand personality and brand storytelling. And it's, it's the central, most important aspect of building a brand story that can resonate in this marketplace. It's sounding like a human being, relating to other human beings, with a true value offer that satisfies their aspirations. That's one of the most important, I think, quotes in the book. So, Laura, you talk about one of your goals is to impact entrepreneurs. And so uh, this last question is, is, is based on just that. And that's if, if there's only one book that you could recommend to our listeners based on the way that it's impacted your life, what book would you recommend? With my eyes closed, I would definitely recommend Business Model Generation by Alexander Osterwalder. Um, It changed the way I work. It changed the way I write. Um, It opened my eyes to the fact that business models can be designed, um, that they don't have to be lengthy to be radically innovative. 
And, and most importantly, I think design thinking. Um, I learned that design thinking has a place in business and, and a very important one, actually. Um, so inspired by Osterwalder's ideas, I, I set out to build this branding framework. And since it inspired me, um, I hope it, it can inspire many of the listeners. And if they have, if they have um, an entrepreneurial idea, this is the book um, that you want to have in your library. Perfect. We actually haven't had that book reference yet, so I appreciate uh, you bringing it up. And before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, Lean Branding? So if you want to get in touch with me, ask questions about anything, feel free to email me at laura at laurabush.com. That's B-U-S-C-H-E. And you can also tweet with me at Laura Bush. So Laura, B-U-S-C-H-E. And Lean Branding is everywhere as Lean Branding. So leanbranding.com. There's a Lean Branding on Twitter. We have a growing community on Instagram, Lean Branding too. Um, lean Branding on Facebook, on Google+, Pinterest. Um, so we'd love to connect with you and um, get your thoughts and impressions about the book. Great. We'll put those different resources and ways to connect uh, in our show notes on the elpodcast.com so they can have easy access to those. Laura, thank you so much for coming on today and uh, sharing your book with us. Thanks for having me. This has been a great opportunity. Um, I do hope uh, I do hope to, to hear from readers, to hear from listeners, and I wish you all the best in your show. Thanks again for joining us today on the Entrepreneur's Library. If you want more information on lean branding, or Laura Bush, you can check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.